Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, a little perspective. My district is larger than the state of Arizona. I mean, Illinois, 60% of Arizona. Uh, it goes from a few small urban areas to frontier. Uh, Navajo Reservation, Hopi Reservation, 12 Native American tribes. Um, economic conditions are on tribal lands anywhere from most of them 50 to 85 percent unemployment rate and getting worse. Uh, you can imagine the problems associated with that and the quality of life that people coming in uh, to those areas have to uh, addre address their lives to and to change. Uh, now Mr. Jumano, uh, the National Health Service Corps provides a vital scholarship and loan repayment programs that reduce workforce shortages in medically underserved areas and has been a successful retention program. For instance, a 2012 study found that uh, uh, an amazing more than half of the participants in, in the National Health Service Corps stay in a health shortage area 10 years after their participation in the program ended. My anecdotal information in my district, that is not true. Uh, not that it's not true nationwide, but the realities of this district are different. And thank God for community health centers. What effects uh, could we expect to see in rural and medically underserved areas if we no longer authorized and increased funding for this program? Well, I think if it's tough now, I can only imagine how tough it would be without that loan repayment. Uh, the cost of medical education has, has gone out of sight, and uh, these young people are making decisions about where they're going to practice and what they're going to practice, and if they don't see the opportunity to have loan repayment as an option, it's going to be very difficult for us as community health centers or any real provider in rural communities to, to be able to recruit them to our communities. Thank you. Mr. Kowalski, thank you for uh, your testimony here today. And as you are well aware, the special diabetes program for Indians is tremendously important. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the American Indian and Alaska Native communities suffer from disproportionately uh, high rates of diabetes. This high prevalence, uh, coupled with uh, food des deserts and limited access to health care facilities, can lead to more negative outcomes for these communities. In addition, uh, the high level of unemployment, uh, tribes, uh, tribes uh, uh, with uh, the inability to find jobs, uh, even if there was uh, the ability to find the economic conditions in order which those were to survive. Uh, will you please highlight how this program effectively supplements the Indian health care services work in preventing diabetes and related complications uh, among Native American populations? Uh, thank you, Representative, for the question, and thank you for your leadership in introducing H.R. 2680, which would increase funding and extend funding for this incredibly important program. As you point out, in your state, we have tribes that have diabetes uh, incidence rates of over 50%, somewhere, some tribes upwards of 80%, and they are very underserved. It's this program that has made uh, significant differences. Uh, we've talked about the importance of culturally tailored uh, uh, interventions, and we've seen that in this program. And I said earlier, the proof is in the pudding. It is, it, we have data-driven metrics in terms of the, the impact, in terms of glucose control levels being better, reducing the risk of complications. For those complications, uh, significant decreases, for example, in kidney disease and eye disease, which will save money. This is a critical program for underserved community, the tribal communities in your state and across the country uh, that deserves uh, renewal and uh, re-upping. And I, again, thank you for your leadership. And thank you. And uh, another question for you is, uh, uh, this program has remained flat since fiscal year 2004. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, yet at the same time, uh, the population served by Indian health care services has increased. Will you please explain what the effects would be if Congress simply reauthorized the program, but did not increase its annual appropriations. 
So since 2004, if you did just the simple math of inflation, we're talking about $150 million versus what would now be $230 million for a problem that's only grown. So we are, again, under-resourced for a problem that is hurting uh, th these communities and uh, costing our economy. We need to do better, and we are seeing results from the program. I think uh, the, the, the upside is, is huge here. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry for taking so much time, and I yield.